Hello and good Tuesday, January 29th, 2008. I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boo. In review, where hope for life on Earth lies in space. Let's talk now about the moon. Suppose I'd like to go there myself. Stake out a nice plot for me and my mum. Toil away my days upon a lovely rock garden, full sunshine and solar winds, full of anticipation for a new world. Orbiting once every 27.3 days. How can I get a piece of cheese? How to buy the moon? I'm feeling lucky. The lunar registry. $37.50 for an acre on sector D5. Central Mare Tranquillitatus, the sea of tranquility. Zoning. Proposed tourism, T1. Scientific industrial, S1. And commercial industrial, C1. Hmm, suspicious. Moon Treaty. Lucky. Uh-huh, I see. The international agreement gives jurisdiction of all heavenly bodies to the international community to be used for the benefit of all states and all peoples. Just like the high waters, matey. With each territory having exclusive control over the first 200 nautical miles beyond the continental shelf, international waters are free. Somewhat like Antarctica. Of course, it's not like a lot of people are living in Antarctica or digging for minerals in the Mariana Trench. So does that mean I have the right to benefit from a deed on the moon? Nope. The Moon Treaty, which was finalized in 1979, has not been adopted by any of the space-faring countries and is thus currently moot. Does that mean I have a right to a plot on the moon if I can get there and claim it? It may be difficult to argue here on Earth that you own and control land on the moon, but it surely wouldn't be as difficult to argue your claim if you can make it there. So essentially, there's no system at all in which to govern the moon or anywhere else in space. First come, first served, I'd say. Not saying anyone might not try and stop you, though. There's a lot more going on up there besides solar wind. The solar winds actually contribute to the prevalence of helium-3, which can fetch millions of dollars per kilogram due to its rich energy potential. Did someone say energy? Nearly absent from the Earth's surface, a single payload of helium-3 on a spaceship flight back to Earth could supply enough power to fuel the whole world for a year. Now that's a serious investment. It could take 20 or 30 years before the right kind of fusion reactor could support production, but then again, it could easily take me 20 or so years to get there. Hmm. If I had a lariat...